Demon Slayer, season three, episode two. What's going on with his face? Yes, I also would like to know that, Tanjiro. What in the world is going on and why does this guy look like daddy? The meddler's dilemma. Oh, okay. We're just hitting kids now. He looks like a robot. Wait, wait, ha wait, is this not a Hashira? How do they not know each other? Was he not part of that, like, really rude Hashira encounter the first time? Oh, so he does know. <laughs> Just being a jerk. <laughs> the most kawaii demon. All right. <laughs> Swordsmith Village arc heating up with a lot of character drama. I don't know, I've learned better than to judge the Hashira at first glance. They were all, well not all of them, they were largely quite rude on introduction, but then everything changes when you go into battle with them. All of that comes out in the wash. They're not a very coherent group, which is really interesting. You'd think that would be an area that would make a lot of difference, you know, if they could unite. Especially now that we know we can take down a ranked demon with enough combined energy. Episode 2, Yorichi Type 0. <laughs> You're welcome. Tajiro, yeah, you, I'm waiting for like a reaction to seeing this weird dude. Withholding judgment. Withholding judgment. I mean, fair enough, I guess, because it's so life or death, and they have such short lifespans. <laughs> wow, it's funny to see Tanjiro act like this, react this way. Yeah, I think me and Tanjiro are on the same page. Maybe Tanjiro will be the one to unite them all. Yet you are still here. He's looking for this key. Okay. Yeah, I thought that might be him, but wasn't sure. Surprised he didn't kill Tanjiro while he had the chance. And now he can access the basement and discover the true plot. Oh, it's not even real. Odd. Odd. Odd that he bears such a resemblance to other things we've seen, other characters we've seen. Is that the weapon that she was talking about? Oh, he's like, um, damn, what's his name? Gilgamesh. Are we entering some kind of technology arc? Well, I guess we can rule out Tanjiro's father, at least. Was it Gilgamesh? Damn. Yes, 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 Tanjiro. It's somewhat familiar. Thank you so much for that exposition because I really needed that. He could be the, the ranked demon. Alright, that creates stakes for his character. He can die. Probably will die. Yep, par for the course for Hashira. Yep, exactly. I'm sure I'll love him by the end of this arc. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Y yes, and he looks... Okay. Yes, I guess so. This crow's just going in. That's yeah, that, that was such a confusing sequence. It just looked so much like Tanjiro that it seemed like some kind of alternate reality. But of course it's possible that that was a distant ancestor of his. But I'm guessing the swordsman they're referring to that the, the robot thing is based on is the number one demon. But don't break it! Don't break it! What are you doing? What are you doing? What's up with his face? 
It's so true, but it's so hard to know that as a kid. I remember so vividly the, the frustration of feeling like lack of control over my environment was just a fundamental part of life. I think that's part of the reason why for such a long time, my stated and eternal focus has been freedom. I mean, this kid is lucky because he has a specific aim, not just not being stuck and obviously has a skill and like a family legacy and all this stuff. That's a huge burden to carry also. Alright, that's one method. That's kind of a beautiful place to take it, actually. Be an essential link in the chain, at least. Right, I mean, speaking of impossible tasks, Tanjiro understands. Yeah, hell yeah. Damn right. Nobody thought it could be done. <laughs> Some good meddling. A plus meddling right there. <laughs> it's nice how Tanjiro takes such delight in the kid feeling better when a nice guy. And I really think even though it's it's kind of a difficult concept and maybe takes a while to get there, there is a place where it does feel really beautiful just to know you've contributed to something. In a way that's hard to explain, there's no limit to its size. So I think the traditional way to think about things, especially in media we watch, is like how grand the thing is, you know, how big the task, how much attention it gets, how glorious it is. But at a certain level of thinking about it, knowing that you were an essential part of that thing, even if that thing was not grandiose in scale, in a typical manner of thinking, can be just as big as the grand action that we depict in media and focus on. Because it's like the book of the universe, right? It's like you you are in there as a key ingredient in all of existence from, from here on out. And I mean, that's true no matter what. That's true for everyone, or at least it's true in regards to humanity and humanity's future. But it's especially nice if you can trace it, you know, you can feel your impact. I apologize for repeating stories, but to this day, despite all the things I've done, the things I've tried, one of my proudest accomplishments is introducing my friend to his wife and they now have a baby. And that just fills me with such immense gratitude that I played a role in that, even though it wasn't uh, necessarily like a determined conscious decision, it just kind of happened. It's something I can see, you know, it, it's something where I had a, a friend and that friendship is beautiful and I had another friend and that friendship is beautiful and I went out into the world and, and met people and the crazy result of all this is a beautiful baby, you know, who will have a life and one day I'll probably, hopefully, have kids of my own, which I imagine will be like an even greater thing. But I mean, there's so many ways to look at it. There's so many little minuscule things, tiny actions that have huge effects. If you feel like those things are good, there's a way in which even the tiniest things can fill your heart with gratitude. But this kid also can take it much farther than he's thinking. You know, he might be able to accomplish his dreams even. He's only 10. Hi. What, what, what were you even... Oh, training. Okay. That was, All this was for training? God, he's rude. Withholding judgment. Withholding judgment. Oh, no. You di Oh, no. You damaged it. You damaged the Gilgamesh doll. Fighting really hard. Fighting... Really hard. To withhold judgment. Tanjiro is very, very gracious, very patient. His crow is a rude one. Yeah, they, they, are, they are a match made in heaven <laughs> for just no reason at all that I can see. The, the crow is not a Hashira. Or is it? No, no, no. No, no. Maybe fixing it will get his mind off his sadness. Give him something to do. Be his first taste of victory on this new path. Tanjiro playing. I'm sure he's fine. Card. Some crazy advanced technology. Oh, here we go, here we go. Does Sanjiro have to fight it now? Maybe it's gonna go berserk. Here we go. At least he only has five swords now. <laughs> we got an ally. Don't forget to breathe. Work on your breathing. This also, in its way, creates a power scale between Tanjiro and the, the Hashira. Tanjiro's struggling with five arms. <laughs> I love this spite. I love this spite-fueled mission. He's enjoying this a little, a little too much. Yeah, yeah, he just made it look so easy and effortless. Can't wait to see them become allies. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Tanjiro never should, should have gotten this kid going. But how will we meet our eight meals an episode quota? <laughs> so interesting shot. The tough master, this little kid. 
Sanjuro, for some reason, just submitting to this kid's will. You could totally just leave and go eat. Sanjuro is just so nice. He just acquiesces. Please, sir. <laughs> Please, sir, can I have some food? This is harder than that time we fought a rock for three months. Oh, he's hallucinating. He's literally at death's door. That's amazing. Couldn't even eat in the afterlife. What does it mean? <laughs> Can you just unlock a new power? Through death? And it seems to have done absolutely nothing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, kind sir, <laughs> for your mercy. Yeah, he's not seeing as much as he is smelling, right? Honestly, that is staggeringly amazing. But don't break it. Yeah. He looks sad somehow. He's got very soulful robot eyes. Okay. His spite runs that deep. <laughs> he wants to shove it to the Hashira and the crow that much. He's, he has time to do a whole monologue in this one swing. He's up betting on his on his horse. He chose his horse. We're in Sword Village, so. Goodbye. Oh, this is the weapon. It's inside. Sword level up, legendary sword, some King Arthur stuff. Only the pure of heart can pull it. Oh wow, that was a fast episode. Oh wait, but it's the first time for the ending. Yeah, I have a feeling this season's really gonna kick it up a notch when we get both Hashira fully involved, like when we know the villain and we become allies instead of whatever this is. I bet her crow is lovely. It's a cool shot. Why are they all so cute all of a sudden? They're getting the Nezuko treatment. Is that just a heartbroken woman that she's leaving in her dust? Is that love Hashira ghosting someone? Broke my heart. Ghosted me. But she doesn't care. She's heartless. She's cold-blooded. Oh, Nezuko copping a feel. Oh yeah, Nezuko. <laughs> she's she's around. Just in her box. And the box gets more screen time than Nezuko does. She's never given this kid confidence. <laughs> Run. You can, you're allowed to eat. When you want, you're an adult-ish. Damn, Tanjiro is so suggestible. So that's episode two of season three of Demon Slayer. And it feels like we're largely letting the groundwork. This is kind of training for a villain that I guess has been previewed. I guess we've seen them. Not exactly sure what shape it's going to take, how they're going to end up at this village. But like, I'm just super excited because these are two of the Hashira that I was most initially intrigued by when they were all introduced. This guy's personality, not the greatest so far, but I have a, a very strong feeling based on the history of the show that once they get involved, once they all get on the same page, they're going to be amazing. That's kind of the sleight of hand the show always pulls with Hashira. You don't really know them until you see them in combat. And the two Hashira that are in this arc, it seems, are very different. So there's a lot of opportunity there for their characters to, to be revealed. Add that in like this pretty cool mystery of this, this robot and its sword. There's a lot to work with. I'm looking forward to seeing it kick off in high gear.